So I mentioned that technology is the future of farming. I'm here with Alan Sharp, and he's been using a drone to plant his cover crop. Alan, tell me how it works. This thing is ginormous. Yes, it is. It's a big drone. This is our newest piece of equipment here on the farm. It's an Agris T50, and we use it for a variety of things. Currently, it's set up for our dry hopper so that we can use that to seed cover crop over standing crops. It also comes equipped with a liquid tank, so the dry hopper can carry 110 pounds of seed and the liquid tank about 10 and a half gallons. Wow. Shall we see what it does? Take it for a spin. All right. Here we go. To work. Oh my god, now do you have to steer it or anything? So I have this field pre-programmed so the drone knows exactly where it's going to go, it knows how many pounds per acre we're going to apply, it knows how high above the crop we're going to fly, it knows uh, the boundaries of the field, it knows any obstacles in the field, so it's, it's flying itself at this point. Wow, so literally set it and forget it. It is set and forget. That is amazing. Our next segment takes a look at how drones are used to deliver a natural pesticide. And what it drops on the crops will surprise you. It's early morning in White Marsh, and Kirk and William Floyd have beaten the sun to the day. The father-son duo are here at the Richardson Farms produce fields to use drone tech to ensure pests don't ruin the harvest. The drone dance. So that's a compass correction. When you're flying something like this autonomous, it just, the, the drone has to know what direction it's in uh, because GPS doesn't tell you north, south, unless you start moving. So in, like in your car, it'll freak out until you start moving. The drone freaks out if it doesn't know which way north is. Drones have become especially helpful to farmers in recent years, and adopting new technology to improve efficiency is nothing new for the nearly century-old Richardson Farms. We've been here since 1930, and I am going to be the fourth generation to continue the business. Brian Richardson oversees the produce at the farms, where they're growing crops like sweet corn, collards, and kale. That also means it's a hotbed for the diamondback moth, a notorious crop killer that loves chewing on leafy greens during its larvae, or caterpillar stage. And they will take a plant and literally eat it down to the veins that are in the leaves. You go out there, and it looks like somebody shot the plant with a shotgun. So I am out here in the field, inspecting kale plants, looking for any kind of diamondback damage. On this leaf right here, we have some, you know, some holing right here in the center, some out here on the edges. And if I turn here to the underside, I can see I have a good sized one on this leaf here, very active in eating. What might seem like a cute caterpillar is actually responsible for billions of dollars of crop damage every year. It's a challenge for sure, but sometimes it helps to take a bird's eye view of a problem. And at 16 miles per hour, Kirk's drones can cover 30 acres in under three hours. And it's gonna follow the path that I created and how I created the path was putting a boundary around the entire field, basically geofencing the field, and then I'm able to write a like a lawnmower stitch pattern within that. So the drone will not leave that geofence field. But there's just one more problem. The diamondback moth, which can see 75 generations in one summer, can also become resistant to conventional pesticides. Say there's a thousand out there and you go out and spray and you kill 900 of them. Those hundred are resistant to that product now. So when they mate, if they produce 500,000 offspring between those hundred, all of them will be resistant to that product. So then what exactly is Kirk spraying onto these fields? Instead of using conventional pesticides, he's dropping 100,000 parasitoid wasp eggs per acre across the fields. Parasitoid wasps are flying insects that lay their eggs on or in the bodies or eggs of other insects. Even though the diamondback can develop pesticide resistance, it can't fight nature. 
and they fly around just like any other bee, feed on pollen, everything like that. And the females will lay their eggs inside of the egg clusters of the diamondback moth. And once they hatch and turn into larvae, they eat the egg cluster of the diamondback moth. It might sound like a horror movie, but it's an effective way for farmers to have nature working with them. So I think it's a cool kind of alien type of operation, kind of like insect warfare. Most people are afraid of it, but this insect is as small as a gnat. It has no stinger. Its only thing that it can hurt is the bug we're trying to kill. Over the course of the year, at just 10 feet off the ground, Kirk will drop millions of wasps onto the farm fields. But at just one millimeter in size, the wasps are often naked to the human eye. To ensure the tiny bugs are leaving the drone, Kirk's son William, or the aptly nicknamed Bug, is mixing the wasp eggs into vermiculite, a hydrous mineral. Vermiculite is actually crushed rock. We can't put the insects out as is, so we put it out in the light material because it won't crush the insects, but it'll still disperse them in an even pattern around the field. Bug mixes while Kirk flies, and the two need to work in sync to make sure all the fields are covered. We're just like NASCAR. We want to be out of there in two minutes on the ground. Uh, we, get, we charge by the acre, so we don't get paid to be on the ground. The efficiency is appreciated by Brian, who knows the future of farming is the same as it's ever been, innovation. Pests are, they play a huge role. If you can't do anything to control them, you'll be out of business. So we have to improvise and change and adapt and overcome. Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. We hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos. To learn more about our show and watch full episodes, check out mpt.org farm or just click the link in the description.